Welcome all to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the Community Relations Manager at Accessory. I'm a disability rights advocate and an attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today, we are joined by John Griffin and the Accessibility.com. Welcome, John. It's good to be here, Josh. Thanks for asking me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I had a very fruitful and fun life in publishing, mostly on the high-tech side. I entered the high-tech publishing industry in the late 70s and stayed in it through the development of the microprocessor, the internet, and one time was publisher of Byte Magazine, Electronic Engineering Times, Portable Computing. Uh, obviously, you can see I haven't been able to keep a job. Or you were so good at your job that everybody wanted you and <laughs> yeah. just kept on getting the services. bailing me out on that, Josh. <laughs> that pretty much, you know, sums it up for my professional life. I was one of the first hires in a company on the internet side called Tech Target. Uh, we started with two small sites and about uh, 60 or 70,000 members on those two sites and I stayed with them for 11 years. We took the company onto the NASDAQ and when I left, we had an audience in excess of 10 million members and 185 wow. sites across the globe. Wow. That's incredible. And that's quite a feat. And I love that now your publishing skills are now with accessibility.com. So tell us a little bit about accessibility.com and what your mission is over there. Accessibility.com drew me because I semi-retired and was comfortable with that, but I was bored. And uh, a colleague of mine who I worked with on Tech Target and in two other subsequent businesses after that, called me and, and asked me if I would be interested in taking a new assignment on. And when he described accessibility.com to me, he got to about the fifth sentence and I jumped right at it. Uh, I said, I'm in, I'm in, count me in. And my reasoning for that is because one of my grandchildren at around his uh, two year mark was uncovered as being autistic. And he's 13 today. Uh, he was 11 when accessibility.com was offered to me. I jumped at it because in those 11 years of his young life, I found out what it means to have a disabled person in your family. And I recalled what my grandmother used to tell me when I was a little boy. Uh, you never know what things are really like until a hammer hits your thumb. So, so true. the realization of the need for accessibility and the kindness that I have witnessed with the schools and the training and the opportunities that have been afforded my young grandson propelled me to take a deep dive look at this and that's how it started. Now, our view was that there were an awful lot of discoveries and science and the American Disabilities Act. And there's a lot of things that existed in, in this century that were not, that go back to the last century in terms of performance to the disabled. Yet, the road still is very long in front of us. And my sense was that accessibility appeared to me to be the oxygen for disability and inclusion. Without accessibility, disabilities, the science, the discovery, the assistive technologies, all of the efforts have to come to a point of being accessible or they stop. And so our mission is to provide trustworthy resources and information that people can acquire through our outlets, 
through accessibility.com and the events that we run and the newsletters that we distribute so that they can empower accessibility. And you guys had a huge event in October. I would love for you to tell us a little bit about that and how it continues on all throughout uh, 2022. Well, the event that we ran, Accessibility Plus, and that was a three-day, three-day, 21-session event. It was keynoted by two of the most noteworthy people in the entire world for disability and, and disability rights, and that's Judy Human and Carolyn Casey. Incredible, incredible women. Yes, incredible very incredible women. And I mean, we Horses. were completely honored, but we were, we were honored also by 21 sessions with speakers that came from a vast diversity across the spectrum that could speak to one day sessions were devoted to assistive technology. Another day session, the second day session was uh, de devoted to employment and human capital. And then you take those two and you put them together. And the next thing that we came to was the third day session was implementation. So how do you combine all of these things if you're a business uh, and put them together so that you can A, comply with the ADA, but also expand your business, tap into the incredible power of the disabled marketplace, which uh, is a multi-trillion dollar economy. I mean, it's 25% of the population of America. So we've got 60 million people plus. I myself am a member of that. I wear hearing aids. And in looking back, not only do I have an autistic son, but there's been disabilities of other kinds in my family that have come up from time to time that we've had to deal with and my extended family. And I'm, I'm no spring chicken. I'm part of the aging population. And I've seen what that can mean firsthand in my own family where grandparents grew on and lost their capabilities and needed help. So it's, like I said, I view it as accessibility being the oxygen that allows the good works of the vast number of organizations that assist the incredible work that's done in fields of technology and support medicine, science. There's a great future in front of us. There is a great future in front of us. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm really excited about having just more and more conversations so that we educate the world and provide more awareness about accessibility, about inclusion, about diversity, equity, and everything else that can really strengthen and diversify the entire employment community, business world, you, you name it. If we have a, a diverse group of people, we're going to have better conversations and include more people to benefit from all the things that websites and businesses have to offer people. I'm, I'm excited about your kind of accessibility.com is making that instead of it being a three day event, you guys are now doing a, you know, a, an event almost every single month in 2022 yeah. with a different, different conversation. Yeah, this, this year, uh, we decided instead of cramming everything into a kind of summit that we would, we're trying to create an accessibility readiness or fitness kit. If you're a, if you're an organization, an enterprise, a business, an educational institution, here, here is how you can mobilize and take initiatives to provide both internal and external accessibility measures that absolutely will bring you to an opportunity to empower accessibility. And each one is, is we'll, we'll, we start with the laws. There's a, there's a very unsettling trend uh, in 2021, uh, the lawsuits for compliance to the American Disabilities Act are on the rise as more and more people seek equality. And the reason for that is that they're not, they're not finding it. Unfortunately, for those that are disabled, 
uh, we still live in an inaccessible world, by and large. There's been tremendous progress made, but it's not finished. And a lot more yeah, and so this takes it into into the rule of law. You know this very well. So that's where we want to start. We want we want companies and organizations to hear from defendants and plaintiffs and organizations that specialize in this, that here are the, here are the rules, here are the rules of the road. Here's what you have to do. Uh, here's how you have to think about proceeding to be successful. Factor in the law. Uh, and, and then we'll what, take what that the, all the way across the spectrum uh, until we get out to December. What are some other conversations you'll be having throughout the year as well? Well, we'll be talking about inclusion. We'll be talking about, uh, you know, how do you how do you provide uh, reasonable accommodations uh, in public transportation? How do you how do you provide uh, provide reasonable accommodations for students on university campuses um, without them having to come and knock on the door and ask for those? Uh, there's, there's an awful lot of, of elements, uh, you know, we, we, we talk about in, inclusive hiring practices. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Where are the, where, what's the best means to do, what's the training that has to go behind this within the organization to make it, to make it successful? I would, I would love for so many of our spotlight session viewers that are businesses to, uh, to go to the inclusive hiring event because that, that gives you kind of a playbook on how to do it within yeah. your businesses and how to give you, make it so you feel like you're not starting from scratch, but you got something to work with. And it's, it's, it's one of those things, once you start learning about it and practice, putting it in practice, it, it then becomes natural over time. And it's, we got to start somewhere with the, with these conversations with businesses, which thank, thank you for making that. And happen. it's hard to do. You know, it's hard to do uh, for, for companies. Uh, it, it, requires, it requires a tremendous amount of, of effort and it requires uh, a cultural change that um, at the end of the day will make them a much, much better company and increase, you know, increase their, their cultural development and increase their knowledge base. And, and certainly uh, by opening up to, to the, uh, to the, to the, per, to the market of persons with dis disabilities, they're opening up great advantage for themselves. So it just, it's a win-win across the board. I, I love W's, I love wins. So, you know, with wins, with uh, accomplishments, I would love to know what is a proud accomplishment that you've had with, with the work that you've done doing at accessibility.com? Well, we started in, we, we launched the company uh, on the on the uh, on the anniversary. Our first uh, first day official day was the anniversary of the, uh, the, the 30th anniversary of the American Disabilities Act. And uh, when we launched, you know, we, we were anonymous for the most part. And within the first year of, of being around, we were able to reach out across an industry and and bring in Microsoft, Google, NBC Universal, uh, major corporations and and major people within those corporations, experts in the field. And and we ran a three day summit that drew close to three thousand registrations. We were keynoted by the two good. most prominent faces in the industry, in Judy Human and, and, and Carolyn Casey. Um, we were basically babies, uh, yet we had established a respectability and a credibility that we didn't think we would, we thought we would be able to do that, but we didn't know how soon we could do that. And there it was. So, uh, and, and the reviews were, were unbelievable. People that were sponsors, uh, you know, just, they just, they can't say enough good things about it. 
you know, in terms of the response, it was a total virtual, you know, it was what used to be the old, you used to have to fly to Las Vegas to go to conferences like this. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. It was an accomplishment in a very short amount of time. Definitely. COVID has definitely taught us the, the ability to bring a lot more people together without having to travel, which in many ways makes it way more accessible to people with disabilities because travel is not always the easiest thing to, to get to and from and to make it happen and to, to get you there in front of the right audience. So uh, 3,000 registers is very impressive. Um, I don't think I've been to an event that large in a while, um, especially online as well. So kudos. And um, I would love to kind of know more kind of, you know, with, with inviting all those businesses, all those sponsors um, and different, having different people registering, what's, what's a message that you'd want to send to business owners that you think that they should hear and what's, in, what's really important to, what's that important message you want to send to businesses? Well, I think that the businesses, I, I, I think the persons that they have a, you know, businesses have a, uh, a hard view on, on uh, what they have to do. They have to make money. They're, they're capitalists. And um, I think one of the things that they are short-sighted on, and I, I don't say this with anybody in mind, but for a business to grow, they have to reach out into new markets continually. They have to find ways to expand their base. What better way than to commit to accessibility that opens up your business to a demographic in the United States of 65 million people? How much bigger plus could you possibly be looking for? Where would you go to find it? It's sitting there. All you have to do is go out and, and, and take the necessary steps within your business to do that. Um, That's a powerful message yeah, right there. It's an investment. It's a, it's a smart business. You know, but to have the conversation. Have the thoughts. Keep a kind heart. And instead of being strictly mercenary, be a little bit missionary. It's not a bad place to be. Well, it's doing the right thing, but it's also within your marketing as well. Like as soon as you open your doors and make yourself accessible uh, to a broader audience, you know, sharing those, you know, that's a win. I love that you talked about win-wins, but like, you know, if you make yourself accessible, you know, promote yeah. that. You're, you're doing good. Be able to say how you're now serving a new population and show what that population looks like, who they are and what they're about and that they're part of your business journey because, and you're excited to have them and to do great things with them. So I, I love, I love the way that you, you presented that John and thank you for that. And the last question I wanted to kind of say, if you could have a conversation with anybody in the world, who would it be and why? That's the easiest question you've ever asked me. It would be with Henry Frazier. He's my 13 year old grandson who is autistic and he struggles with verbalism. He is, his cognitive uh, senses and his growth has been enormous. But what I dream about is before I leave this planet, I would love to sit down with Henry and have a conversation that is as free flowing as the conversation that you and I just had. That would be my wish. It's a beautiful thing. And that's family. Uh, family is so important. Family is something we fight for. We, we live for, we love for, and, um, you know, having conversations, you know, I never thought about it the way that you just put that there. And it's just having that opportunity, that chance that's, that moment in time to have beautiful conversations with people we care about is, is everything. So thank you for, for bringing that to life at the end of this, at this spotlight session. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm.